Okay, welcome everyone on uh, today's uh, last talk, uh, and this is from this is will be delivered by me. I am Andrea Holacek. I work as a SUSE, uh, currently SUSE manager uh, team, but uh, all over the place. Uh, and today I will talk about this uh, project, uh, research project called Iguana, which started uh, during the basically during the Open SUSE conference last uh, this this year. Uh, where we were talking about whether do, uh, whatever improvements or what require what new requirements we read from the uh, from the installer and this uh, idea come up. So let's start uh, with some basic problem definition of what we were facing. So the, we were discussing what uh, all the needs we need uh, for a new ALP project for a new uh, installer, and there is always this. Uh, seemingly going uh, seemingly uh, requ requirements going against each other so on one hand we have this universal operating system in our case it's just universal core of supporting different workloads but on the other hand we have very specific hardware so configurations we want to support uh, different architecture different anything and on and in the third part we have a uh, different deployment or not just deployment, but uh, installations and recoveries, disaster recoveries, anything which we, which we would like to uh, have some uh, uh, some way to, to support or to or to work on it. And on top of all of these requirements, we would like to have this uh, installer or this uh, init RD, which we will be building somewhat secure, uh, trustworthy, and uh, ideally verifiable. Uh, so uh, we were uh, thinking about this, and to support all of uh, our these ambitious goals, uh, we kind of we come up with the idea that uh, similarly as the Alp, we will have some minimal, functionally minimal, stable, ideally static core, which will not be changed too often. But we would like to have uh, almost. Ex extreme expandability to because this core is really functionally minimum minimal we would like we need some extensions uh, which will which will supply all the required uh, functionalities we want uh, this uh, eventually uh, moved to single step definition that we will have a static jacket based in it rd uh, which will be running uh, installation containers uh, which will uh, which will be doing installation workflows on individual target machines. So it will be running on the target machine, not somewhere else. A uh, couple of notes here: why why we choose Dracut? Well, Dracut is uh, currently the go-to in uh, any tidy builder, at least for SLE systems. Uh, we use it for all of different things, and it provides us all of. Uh, tooling we need for it. Uh, it's easy to get into it. It's basically a bunch of shell scripts and a couple of utilities. And uh, so we don't want, we, the last thing we wanted is to invent some new thing, some new way to build in Itadi when we already have uh, this uh, system. I, uh, me, personally, I was already familiar with it from the SUSE manager side. And uh, what, uh, why containers? Well, the containers because uh, it's the ALP theme basically, and it's already existing ecosystem for distributing software and and secure software because we can sign them and so on. Uh, so having these installation containers was a uh, ideal uh, ideal thing to to go. So we come up with uh, with Iguana. First, the naming, the naming Iguana, because it's a lizard, so we wanted to continue with uh, with this. Initially, it was thought that Iguana will be name of the new installer, but then uh, they didn't want it, so I took it for, for this uh, initial installation project. Uh, so Iguana uh, is uh, currently in a research phase. So as a disclaimer, this is uh, currently heavy, under heavy development. Uh, it's not yet production energy, even though we have a couple of uh, useful examples, but uh, it's still far fr 
from uh, ready to be released. And but it uh, at, at least it has some proof of concept how it can work and uh, what we also need to do to finalize this thing. So it uh, it's uh, uh, it comprises pro of uh, or it's uh, it's uh, target are uh, that we should support all of these uh, various deployment met uh, boot methods. Uh, we already I already uh, used it for a pixie booting and direct terminal boot, but ideally we would like to have immutable images and uh, whatever uh, we uh, we uh, throw at it. And we should support all deployment methods. That means we can run. Now we should run uh, installer. We should run uh, some scripts which will do the image deployment or pixie deployment or managed deployment from server. All of these uh, should be supported. Uh, also, we won't let this to be secure uh, by using the static uh, init ID because uh, the idea is eventually we will sign it, and then it could be used uh, as uh, not only uh, when when we are booting we're using secure boot. In secure boot, we just validate kernels. Idea is that we will then need, can validate iguana, and iguana then can use Side containers to validate up all the uh, tasks we will be doing with. And lastly, by this extreme expense ex expandability, uh, we would like it to we would like it to be future proof. So uh, when there will be some new hot thing, uh, it should be fairly easy to just add a new support without rebuilding to re rebuilding everything. Iguana itself is uh, comprised from for from different components. Uh, these are the main main things: the Jackrut module, which is obvious as this is based on Jackrut, some kind of workflow parser and executor, because we want some way to specify what we want to run, how we want to run, and where we want to take these uh, uh, scripts from or programs from. Uh, the installation container bundles is basically the, the actual payload, uh, which will be doing the hard work uh, for the installation or deployment. And then there is some packaging glue, uh, particularly when you want to use it for a Pixie booting, uh, you want to install it as a package, which will which will bring kernel and this init ID, which you then, then just uh, pass to the UFI Pixie or just the regular Pixie. So let's uh, talk about uh, the components uh, in more detail. So let's uh, with the uh, Jacket module. We have a uh, Jacket Guana, which has uh, as uh, all Jacket modules uh, multiple uh, responsibilities. The first one is which is actually called which is actually executed on the machine which is building this in uh is to gather all the requirements uh, we will need in. Uh, and during the actual uh, in a run, that means the uh, the podman in this case, uh, podman because it was the easiest to do and uh, as a static uh, go by uh, binary, it has many quite few requirements. But there's also some iguana tools and whatever tools we need for the for the in a to to run. So we all gather here in the in the first state during the uh, there is the in in the building. Next are uh, already during the execution of of the initRD, we need to prepare uh, this uh, container environment, which is a little different of uh, when the mesh when the system is already running, because for example, uh, Podman by default is using pivot root when it's changing the uh, root to the container. We can't use it because initRD is running from root fs. And it's uh, not allowed, so we need to disable disable this uh, uh, this option. We also need to force uh, storage driver to use overlay. Uh, this is particularly when building this in it, uh, iguana on SLE system, SLE 12, SLE 50, one of those uh, forced uh, BTRFS storage driver, but we don't have BTRFS in it. I mean, it's not built on it, so we don't have it there. Uh, so we need to switch to different uh, overlays, uh, to the different driver. 
And then different other things like status reporting, uh, the, the pipe where we write it, it will display it on the on the uh, on the screen and whatever your, other utilities we need for this uh, container run. Then we want uh, uh, the actual preparing of the, of the actual execution. So as I was talking before, one of the part uh, is the workflow module and workflow. Uh, workflow um, document and we need to somehow get them so we need to prepare we need to download them from there or from somewhere or read it from already built in if it is built in in any tidy we need this uh, we need to read this file from somewhere and uh, prepare all of these uh, 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 immediate preparation steps before execution in the executing individual containers. And the last thing, so now we between the the fetch control workflow and the check system partition step, there there is the actual container run which I will show later. But the last thing the the, the directed module does is after all of these containers uh, finish running, we need to find out where we want to switch, uh, where we are to continue booting, or what do we want to do next. So uh, this uh, record module needs to figure out all of these details. And then depending on the circumstances, either reboot, kai or, or uh, switch root and continue booting. So this is about uh, what is the main growth of the main task of the record module. I was talking about uh, uh, Iguana workflow module. Uh, this Iguana workflow is a uh, Rust binary, which I wrote. It is basically glorified YAML parser. It loads up uh, uh, Iguana workflow YAML file and executes uh, what is uh, in basically in this YAML file. Um, so it's not really uh, too big functionality wise and the important part is the iguana workflow now the yaml file uh, on the screen you can see one of the examples uh, iguana workflow is very loosely based on github workflows so it has some name it has a it's, uh, it has concept of jobs uh, and uh, some uh, uh, steps and uh, containers and uh, service containers and so on there are distinct changes, like uh, in the GitHub workflow, when you have multiple jobs, these jobs are executed in parallel. We do not have these. These jobs in Iguana are executed in sequence. But uh, there is an option how we can run multiple containers in parallel. So in this example we have uh, before me, uh, this is just uh, for uh, SUSE Manager or Uni uh, image-based deployment thing. Uh, we specify where to download the, in, the, the container. And if needed, we pass some uh, environmental variables which are passed to the container. And then container itself, the logic itself, knows what to do with it. Another example is being a deinstaller, uh, which from your team. Again, we have uh, now we have a, one job uh, which downloads one container. And then there is a services which down, downloads uh, pools different containers. And services are those uh, things which are run in parallel. So now the Iguana workflow module, the, the Rust binary, it will at first start all the services, uh, service containers. They will start them in parallel and then it will start the job container uh, and wait until the job container is uh, will finish. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that was a little introduction to the work, Iguana workflow overall. And back into the package. Uh, so, what's its responsibilities? It pulls all the images. Ideally, well, it's not yet implemented, but the plan is that it will check, uh, or it will force uh, cosine validation for these containers. Uh, but this is not yet implemented. And it starts these containers. Uh, these containers, because we need to, of course, uh, 
manage the software, the, the machine we need to install, we need to uh, do the partitioning and all of this. Uh, so all of these containers are started as a privileged containers. Uh, not only uh, for all of this uh, partitioning and so on, but also when you have, uh, for example, uh, new new drivers, or you want to mode probe uh, some new uh, drivers or modules to kernel, uh, if you are running a privileged container, you are able to do so. Uh, you can load kaexec, uh, preload kaexec even from the co container before if you are running in a privileged container. Uh, this, uh, the kaexec, the funny uh, note, this kaexec thing was actually why I can't use uh, VCI containers, for example, to build this uh, installation container because we are, do not uh, have kaexec binaries yet because it was not expected that containers will run kaexec, of course. But actually, in this case, especially when the, with the uni subboot container where we run kaexec directly inside, uh, I need to do need to base it on uh, regular SLE. And the the last thing, uh, or one of the other things, uh, what Iguana workflow us is to mount a shared volume. Uh, this shared volume, the slash Iguana is mounted to all of these containers, to the job containers or the service containers, even if they are not uh, explicitly requiring it. They are, this is always mounted. Uh, this is to share uh, some you know, data between containers and also the results once the containers are finished running. After each job, uh, this, uh, this module will clean up all the images because before new job is started. So uh, of course there may be some optimizations to be done, but currently the main, um, our main constraint is, is the memory usage for it because we are still running on the web uh, in the init RD. So we are running in the, uh, on the, in the RAM, RAM disk uh, and we need complete init RD there, uh, which is about 90 to 100 megabytes now because of the Podman, which is 47 megabytes big binary. And then all the container images, which uh, if they are not optimized for it, for example, uh, at some point uh, the installer took uh, 600 megabytes uh, for the container, for the one container, and I think 400 for another one. So it's a gigabyte of memory, which uh, we will just waste by downloading the container image without even running them. Uh, so uh, we need to, if, if we have multiple jobs in the workflow file, we need to remove the container before uh, executing new one, just to avoid running out of the memory. Okay. Uh, now, next part is uh, Igua installation bundle. This is just nomenclature, uh, which I want just to call that uh, we have uh, Iguana workflow file, which is specifying what containers run and what options to pass it and what volumes you, or whatever uh, mount to it. And then we have installation container. And these two things together uh, create an installation bundle. Uh, the uh, actual installation containers are the actual payload or the thing which will be doing uh, this uh, installation or, or main tasks. So what's the difference between installation containers and the regular containers? Why I called it specific installation containers. Well, from the outside, it's this normal container. It's just OCI or Docker container. There is no big change. But the uh, main thing is that uh, there are some, uh, some assumptions uh, about how these containers are started. And, and what we expect it uh, after the uh, after uh, they are finished. So how are they started? Now, uh, as I mentioned, there are job and service containers. We need to know what container we are running uh, because the job container is uh, started in a for uh, as a foreground service uh, as an interactive container, and uh, we are waiting until this container will finish. So if you are writing the software for the job container, uh, there is there need to be some point at time, in time the, this container will terminate itself. 
for example, in the salvo scenario, when the, when the image is deployed, it will switch, it will uh, just stop for the main process main process and uh, container will stop working. And uh, in the deinstaller, it will uh, try to uh, initiate reboot, which uh, will not uh, currently uh, functional this, but this is something we will still need to work on. Uh, the, on the other hand, service containers they are running in background and they can be some just like uh, services and uh, uh, the workflow module will switch them off as soon as the job container will start running. Now, I already talked that we have a uh, shared Iguana volume where we have uh, different uh, uh, for sharing the results, but also uh, we are pro pro you know, pulling or pushing a machine ID, which is generated by uh, Jackpot module to the Iguana so that we can use this machine ID from, from Iguana if the container don't want to uh, initiate its own or, does, or can't, uh, so we can reuse it, uh, so we can have the machine ID from the, uh, from the machine itself. And there is also a progress file. Now this is just called the progress. If everything you write to it, it will be displayed on the uh, screen of the target machine. And again, this is set up by the Jacquit module, which is monitoring uh, this file and uh, reporting it. If uh, if there is a ply mode per screen, it will pr uh, print it as in the ply mode. And if uh, it's not active, then you just print uh, on the screen. And uh, another thing, as I mentioned, is privileged uh, with host networking, but this is uh, it can be expected. But what it's uh, not so usual is that we are working on different routes. That means. Uh, when you have uh, some, in case of partitioning and the installer, it's basically no issue because they are working on the devices. But if you are uh, doing some recovery or some uh, configurations of existing system, uh, you need to take into account that uh, you need to mount uh, your device and work on it uh, on different directory, not just uh, oh, it's not mounted on the root. The, the root is not the one. Uh, you, you need to work on. Similarly, there are some exit expectations. Uh, we need to ensure that job container finishes the execution. And then uh, the record module expects two, uh, at least one file, this, this mount list. Uh, this is also subject to change because it's still in heavy development. Uh, but the uh, idea is that uh, this jacket module need to find out, figure out what to do next. And in mount list, uh, it is that uh, it is on on each line you specify I want I have this device for example using the UID, and I want to mount it as a as a, this uh, under this mount point. And we and it is reading it line by line and and exit mounting it as uh, they go, and then. Uh, uh, one of these mount uh, mount points uh, need to be uh, slash sysroot, I think it is it's by default. Uh, well, but by default, uh, Dracut is using, and so then we know what to mount uh, in the in the in the in itself, and uh, continue booting to switch root on to this. Uh, of course, uh, another idea is to do some automatic detection based on the partition UID, but this is not yet implemented, but uh, it is a good idea to do so. Either already, either directly in the Dracut itself, uh, Dracut in itardi, or in a special containers which will just uh, read partition table and provide the mount list. So this is, uh, you know, we can do either way. Okay. And the second file, the kernel action, this is a hint for Iguan, uh, for the Dracut module, whether we want to reboot or kaexec if uh, Dracut module detects that the kernel uh, version is different on the deployed system rather than what we are running. So we can influence whether what action we want to use. This is currently used only by the, uh, by the sub boot thing, but uh, uh, this there, it is, uh, uh, available for us. Yep. And the last part, uh, what I was, uh, what was on the original screen, is the packaging glue. 
Uh, this is really just a, a simple make file which will initiate Rakut uh, no host only build. So it, pro it uh, provides some uh, options to the Rakut init RD builder. So it knows it is not, it should not take the actual running hardware as what will it will be running on. Uh, so it is no host only and a couple other options. And uh, this make file then collects the, the kernel, which is, uh, which was installed, which is on the build host currently, basically on a, uh, in a virtual machine in the uh, OBS. And this build kernel and package it and when you download this Iguana package, install it, uh, it will install these two files in the user share Iguana, uh, which you can then use for whatever reason. Okay. And how do we, how can we use it or test it? Uh, we install the Iguana package. We use it either for Pixie or VM uh, direct kernel boot uh, from the package. And for the kernel command line option, we have these various option, uh, options. I see if there's a rendering issue. Okay, so there is a control URL. This uh, you specify the URL where to download the workflow file, workflow YAML file. Uh, there is also an automatic load. If none of if none of this is specified, it will look to what if in editRD there is already some uh, control file control, named control YAML. Uh, uh, but this is only loaded if none of other options are specified. If you want to load it remotely, we use control URL. There is also option to just specify containers uh, and uh, with the name and uh, registry and the name of the image uh, where to download from. You can specify more of them, but the issue is that you can't use, uh, you, you can't specify any other, you know, like environmental variables or volume modes and so on. It can be done only in a control uh, file, control YAML file. And for debug, uh, we have uh, Iguana debug, which is which will not only start uh, debug logging for the workflow module, so you can see what is being downloaded and uh, what how it is executed, but it also uh, prevents uh, cleanup of the images. In case there is some something wrong and the you know, containers are still running, uh, or even if they are not running, uh, they are stopped, but the images are still there, so uh, you can start them uh, if you get to the uh, uh, Jakut emergency shell. And for that, uh, you specify RD shell, which will enable it. So, so if there's failure, you will uh, drop in, or RD break, which uh, which specifies that even if everything is fine before the switching route to the install system, it will drop to a Jakut emergency shell and you can inspect uh, the init RD. RD debug is the generic uh, Jakut uh, option to enable all, uh, all logging, uh, debug logging. That basically means set minus X on all the uh, Jakut scripts. Okay, I will now show you how it, uh, how it now looks like, so let's, Try, I will share the screen. I think you can see my screen now, right? So now I have yes. uh, I have uh, my virtual machine, it is switched off. Uh, I am using Dyna kernel boot from the uh, from the, uh, the kernel and in it I provided from the package. And I first I will try this, the, the sub boot uh, thing, so uh, which will uh, download image from uh, from a from a SUSE manager uh, server. So this is the usual stuff, the initialization, and now we can see there was a downloaded. Uh, yeah, I can't unfortunately make it uh, bigger, but it uh, downloaded the control file and then it downloaded uh, the container image and then. Uh, it started the container image. Yes, there is still uh, I there is still one typo I did not fix, and this is that I am running it with a DTI. Idea was uh, that uh, um, idea was that uh, when you you could specify just uh, 
just so uh, let's call it the uh, busy box and start it in a busy box yeah and this is when i try the live demo <laughs> okay so let's try a different one i uh, today i broke my machine susan manager machine because of some testing so uh, but this is a problem not of iguana, but this is a problem of uh, of uh, Salboot. Uh, so let's try the different one. When I will uh, I will just go to the the installer. I can uh, copy the YAML file. This is how it looks for the installer. I will just copy it from the from the GitHub and changed it. Change it here. Paste. Okay, so just changed this. Did I switch it off? Sorry. So now it is again doing some network setup, USB setup. This is take taken all from the from the Jackwood thing. And now it is trying to download the backend container. This is the service container. It started to running, run it in the background, and now it downloaded the input container, uh, the web, uh, the web front end. Now I, we don't have uh, X container or, or Valent or anything, uh, so uh, that's to be done. But if I go to to the machine and port 9090 uh, it, it's automatically generated the uh, certificate the certificates and now we, you can see that i am uh, i i have access to the d installer and i can do the installation if i look into the terminal to the root i can see uh, there is the iguana directory and uh, there is the, the machine ID which is generated if I just uh, uh, do uh, and switch back. I, sh I see test from container printed on the and uh, on the machine. And if I had this is not built with a Jack with Plymouth yet, but otherwise I would see it in a in a Plymouth as well. And in case of installer, I can just uh, check whatever, and it will uh, eventually try to do do the installation. Uh, now, which we will not wait here because of the of uh, the uh, the time constraints. But you can see it uh, detected uh, the, 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 the devices and it can, I can uh, start to install, but we will not uh, wait for uh, for it then. Okay. And uh, we have only these two, so I, I don't have anything more with, the, uh, with this. I'll just stop sharing. And there is a question, what is the reason for not using BTRFS? Uh, I am well. I'm not sure if in the uh, in the in it RD I can actually. Well, I can use it on I I'm not sure. I was uh, looking at it uh, based on the last uh, year's uh, Labs conference uh, about the uh, RD optimizations, and true that uh, uh, there was quite. A, yeah, I I noticed that the VTF is about there, but it's. Uh, let me share again the screen. But so far, I did not switch it. I am not opposed to it, of course. This is some, I just uh, starting with it. Okay, and here. Uh, we can see, actually monitor it here. Uh, where is it? Here. So it is installing, it is doing the installation or partitioning now and uh, that installation. And we see it taking 1.4 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, yeah, as I say, this is uh, this using this uh, currently. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's already optimized this uh, the installer uh, because we were talking about it, but I don't know if it's already well already done. It was 600 megabytes uh, in size of these containers, so they took huge amount of memory. 
I guess uh, we can do better there. Uh, we can lower it, but I don't know if we can lower it for like 500 megabytes, at least not for graphic crossing or for this one. The salt boot thing, uh, salt boot thing is uh, 300 megabytes, the, the container. So, uh, but e so even with it, I am not able to get less than one gigabyte of RAM. And uh, uh, this is what is used by here. But yeah, I can I can. Oh, but we don't see here. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I don't I can't see the the or the. So in Itadi itself, and I don't have access here, maybe if it uh, eventually, if I terminate it. But uh, yeah, the in Itadi itself is, we can check it. Oh, it is. Um, images. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the wrong machine. And now, okay. so the initar is Linux and initar the uh, 188 megabytes for for the for the term for the tumbleweed based initar. The three based initar is very little uh, short, little slow. Uh, the smaller, uh, and there is also there are also tasks to lower this uh, because I'm using Podman. Podman is quite huge binary, 47 megabytes. So idea was to get rid of Podman. I use Run C. Run C. We, I we can create the JSON files needed for Run C uh, in the in the in the, in the init RDE, So it's not a problem. And uh, uh, Run C is about 10 megabytes, and but we for downloading, I was uh, trying to I was investigating Scopeo, which is is based on the same uh, Go binaries as uh, Podman, and it's a little slow, more, smaller. It's like 20 megabytes, so we can save 70 megabytes by this if it will work. Um, I was also looking into C Run, which is couple which is less than megabyte but the c run i am not sure how its current state if it's already supported on s390s or not because it was uh, limited on uh, less architectures where spoonman <laughs> should be running on all, all of our supported architectures okay uh, in the meantime i will continue uh, so yeah, I was talking about the security. Uh, now the idea is that uh, with, with Iguana being uh, static, we should make it uh, signed. Uh, we should uh, validate the containers. There are open questions how to validate uh, custom containers when the customers will want or our users will want to create their own. Uh, installation of containers or installation met uh, deployment methods. Uh, how to add new uh, new keys or external keys? Maybe uh, having different uh, container, having all including uh, like uh, official SUSE container, which will be able to include third-party keys. That's still too up to discussion. I am not. Uh, I must admit that I am not uh, too knowledgeable of what all the steps need to be done to make it uh, made it completely uh, signed and secure, and what are the rules there. So this is uh, this will need some more collaboration from more people. And and with this validation, there is not only for containers, but also uh, to HTTPS validation for where you are downloading the the uh, workflow file. Uh, currently, there it is downloaded in insecure way. It's not validating anything, and we would like to change that, of course. Uh, so this is all what need to be uh, figured out before we can ship it as a secure thing. And uh, other drum as I mentioned, there is a big memory usage concern. We need to uh, figure out how to how to lower this. 
for example, with this D container, you can you could see during installation 5.4 gigabytes, and it it's not it's basically without uh, Wayland and without uh, some web browser. So if we uh, I already have some uh, Wayland uh, containers so use based on Matter, yes, that's what we have in Sli, uh, and they are both uh, Firefox container and Matter container. They are both 400 megabytes each. And but I did, uh, and so we will see how uh, it definitely I don't fit in two gigabytes, so we will need even more. Uh, but this is without any optimizations, uh, and there are many of duplicates uh, uh, parts between these two containers. So maybe just having one with uh, Firefox and Matter, or some other browser which can draw, uh, display uh, this deinstalled kiosk mode. Uh, this is still something we can optimize, but it is. Uh, Still, uh, quite a way to do this. One of the thing uh, you can you could uh, also notice that uh, with the mount with mount list when we create the full full disk encryption and in the uh, container, and then we need to remount it in the init ID. Uh, this will be a challenge. Uh, I guess this we can do it with TPM. It's probably solvable. The same for uh, passphrase. We can just pass it. Uh, bit from container to initID, but for example, uh, using a FIDO uh, keys or something different for some hardware keys uh, to remount it will be uh, difficult. So maybe just uh, forcing a reboot after the installation would be would be the better way. But uh, we need this is something we need to solve, and which is uh, with this, uh, I for me it uh, looks like a difficult task for now. And then uh, uh, the one thing that the, with the with the regis registries, uh, I'm sure they are meant to cover quite heavy traffic. But if we imagine when customers will not use their own uh, registry, but will want to use our uh, registries, and we will have thousands and thousands of machines which will be being installed this, and it will, they will be downloading. Uh, these uh, containers all the time. It may be a concern, particularly when I was testing it, I easily went out of the, uh, I hit the rate limit on the Docker Hub when I was uh, trying some just debug containers. So uh, this is something which may or may not be concerned with will depend on the usage. And of course, IDI, uh, there's also, also some preliminary support to have this on the local disk, like for offline installation. So we can add uh, registry, local registry to the, to the Docker or the Podman and load it locally. So this will alleviate it. Uh, this will help with it. Uh, but then you will need uh, some kind of uh, ISO or DVD or some image with, uh, with uh, containers already on the medium, which is not yet uh, uh, working. At least I, I did not yet manage to build it uh, using uh, Kiwi, for example. Okay, and um, yeah, but the advantages, yeah, there is, you can see that I didn't change anything with the entirety. I just changed the uh, parameters and changed completely the way how it was being deployed. I could use the uh, the, uh, the installer or every, uh, whatever, uh, as a recovery. Uh, I don't have, I don't need to do any, uh, prepare any special recovery uh, uh, entities. And so on. So uh, this is uh, certainly helpful. Uh, there is the possibility to make it uh, to, to hold the boot process or the deploying process a little more secure. And one of the, my pet peeves here is that it can help uh, to distribute the installer or the development across multiple teams. This is something, for example, we with the Suma we have our own init ID. With this, with the salt boot, we are not using anything else. We just wrote it by hand, and no one, basically, no one knows about it. And if anyone wants some new thing, they have to build it their own, uh, with non in non-standard way, or they need to task uh, Yas team to to work some to add something to install. So with this, we can have something which is which is which defines some format. And each of these teams can write their own installation uh, methods, deployment methods for whatever reason they have or whatever usage they have, and, and provide a workflow file and uh, 
and we basically done with it. Um, since there are containers, we can test them uh, separately without it. Uh, we can use this also when there are some bugs. So to uh, in uh, to update the installer in some way or change, we update it on the registry and it will be automatically updated everywhere. We don't have to wait for uh, quarterly updates disks, for example. We can supplement the UD if uh, if it will need it. So on, so, but it's in the future. Yeah, and that's also also a call call for action. Because uh, the iguana is currently one man thing. Uh, I did it during the summer, then I need to stop working on it because of other uh, issues in the, or other workloads or in the SUSE manager. So I would really appreciate some more people looking into it. And of course, we will need some more uh, installation containers. We have two to display the capabilities, but they are, they are not enough. And without them, uh, it can't do anything. So. Uh, any help will be definitely appreciated. And uh, if, of course, uh, you want to help, uh, this is the resources. Uh, for now, it is still in my GitHub repository. Uh, I we already talked about it, moving it to the open source, uh, open source repository, but uh, I did not have, uh, I didn't find time, time to talk with the people there. And I'm not a member of, uh, of it, uh, so I can't uh, create a project by my own. Uh, but eventually, I guess it will be part of the open source uh, namespace if uh, all goes well. And if there are any further questions, uh, we, uh, I am on an installation work group. So on the Slack, you can uh, you can, ch uh, can check the there or ask us there, and uh, I will be willing to help. And that this is all from my side. So if there are, are there any other questions? Thank you, Andre. Uh, I liked the demo. We will see if there are any questions. We, I, okay. I have a question uh, myself. Uh, I saw that uh, you used the directory slash iguana as a shared shared medium between the containers and uh, the workflow workflow manager or workflow executor itself is also it, it, or uh, runs in a container and how it learns that for example a job container finished like can has it visibility just towards the state of the job container yeah. uh no no the, the workflow module is running it in itadi in itadi starts it uh, uh -huh, so yes, yeah, so it's inside yeah. the normal record. It, uh, yes, this workflow uh, binary, it is part of the init ID. So, uh, and this binary then parses the YAML file and starts the Podman containers. So it is waiting until the job container finishes. Uh, yep, thanks. Now I get it.